You've painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair. Ruby, are you contemplating going out somewhere? The shadow on the wall tells me the sun is going down. The Scepter of Zavendor is a magical game for two to six players. As students of the mystic arts, players activate gems to acquire currency, which is used throughout the game. Each player uses a different character who starts with a distinct extra advantage. Artifacts are used to give benefits and to score points. Sentinels are also available for final scoring bonuses. During a turn, a player may acquire and or activate more gems, move up one space on any of the six knowledge tracks, and put up for auction artifacts or sentinels. After completing all of a player's actions in the order of their choosing, their turn is over. When five sentinels have been auctioned and sold, players tally up their final scores. Active gems, artifacts, sentinels, as well as knowledge track bonuses are totaled, and the winner of the Scepter of Zavendor is the one with the most victory points. This is one of those games where you basically on your turn you have all kinds of actions you can do and then you can do them in any order. And yeah, then, and then you're completely done and then the, the next, next person, person goes, which can lead to some downtime if downtime. Basically on your turn you can advance one of your tracks that let you get things. The knowledge tracks. Yeah. Right, only one though every round. Only one which you have to pay more and more for each time. Which this is again is essentially just an engine building, like an economic engine building game, right? You're trying to maximize the amount of magic that you produce in a turn so that you can then end up buying more things that give you more magic, or at the end, just the, just the scoring, the sentinels, right? Just the scoring things. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's all about producing as much magic as you can each round so that you can then outbid everybody else, because it's a bidding game too, outbid everybody else for whatever it is you want. Or cleverly bid something up so that somebody pays a lot for it, and then you put something that you actually wanted up for auction. So they get, get it cheaper. Really cheap, yeah. 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 So the other thing you can do is put something up for auction. In any number of things, so one at a time. But there's no limit to the number of things. You can well, once you win something, you can't. No, you can keep. You, you you're not limited to one. You can auction off as many things as you want, as long as you have the money to pay for. Right, right, right. Because if you ever win an auction, you can't pay them. Pay for it, you're out of the game, which is a little odd. That's sort of that's a pretty harsh punishment for auctioning something that you can't. There's not really much else you could do though, because or else you could just keep auctioning things and make everyone spend. Well, money. no, no, you could still have a you could have a penalty, like make you lose half of like make you lose a gem or you know some there could be some penalty rather than boom, you're out of the game. Does this play two player? It does. Yeah, I played two player. And how did that go? Okay. It was nice and short, but since it's got the auctioning this yeah, I would see that I could see that, that wouldn't I don't think I'd want to play it with less than four. Yeah, well three might I mean three's not ideal, but I could see it. Two it's just would not seem as fun. Really, yeah. No, I could see that. Yeah, I played it with five too. And it wasn't as long as I thought. It would be, but one of the things with the game is that if people have poor math skills, they're going to take a long time. Right, yeah, because the numbers are... It's you not, have to do lots of addition. Yeah, it's not just fives, tens, and twenty, or whatever. It's, not, it's no easy decimal places. It's, it's all... And you have to kind of play on an honor system. Because with. you have to trust... Unless you want to do people's math for each other. Just to watch. Oh, I see. Yeah, you have to trust that they're cashing in what they say that they are. Or not even that they're cheating. It's just that they're doing their math properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Then it would be a really long game. I know. I've I've uh, come close to making the mistake of selling gems for what Full they value. Were, yeah, like like forgetting that it's half. Especially when you increase your knowledge in gems quite a bit, and then you would get them a lot cheaper. And you sort of look at it and you go, okay, well. You know, there are only six, and you forget that selling it is only three. That's an easy one to to miss. That's you really do have to plan ahead in order for the consideration of the other players. If you just sit there 
and space out until it's your turn, and then you try to figure out everything you were going to do, that's going to cause a lot of downtime for everybody else. But if you more or less know what you want to do on your turn, I mean, the whatever comes up for auction, that can change what your plan was. But you should at least have some kind of contingency plan of how you want to run your turn. I mean, I've, I've played where it comes to my turn, it's like, boom, 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 I'm done. Next person, and the next person's like, um. Yeah, because we... There played four player one time and one guy was taken just forever and yeah. he ended up winning. Yeah, well that's because he was... Yeah, well he was just analyzing everything. Yeah, and that takes and then, up the fun. Yeah, and then I played at five player and everyone was just doing their turns really quicker and it was, even right. with the one more player, it was way faster. Yeah. And one of the good things too is that you can always check your score to make sure the numbers are correct. That's, yeah, true, yeah. The, the score isn't cumulative each round, it's whatever you're, you don't add on to your score. You don't like score a certain number every round, it's whatever your total score is yeah. throughout the game. Yeah, so for that's all good. your goods and the numbers are right there. Yeah. And uh, if you lose stuff then your score goes down. Yeah, which can actually be uh, a strategy. You can, tr you can try, you can sell stuff off so that your score goes down so that you're no longer in first and you no longer have the penalty of, because there's a penalty for being in first and second. Place. Yeah, which and is neat. Did you use the, uh, like if there's the, the first player has a minus 10, whatever, second player minus 5, third player nothing, and I think it's fourth player nothing, fifth plus 5, sixth plus 5, but then if you're playing with fewer, you can knock out some of the middle ones, right? So that the, like if you're playing yeah, a 5 player game, you knock out the number yeah. 4 position rather than the number 6 position. Even with 2 player, I did that. Yeah, 2 player was like an hour for me. Oh, okay. And the five player was? Five player was about two and a half. Because that four player game we played was about two and a half, yeah. three hours. But that again, that was because of the one guy who... One guy. <laughs> one guy. <laughs> half the game. <laughs> but you have to make room for that too. I mean, you have to realize who you're playing with. and You have to make them do a math test. <laughs> yeah. The theme is... Uh, Very pace it on, I think. Magical? It's supposed to be, yeah, you're supposed to be a bunch of wizards collecting magic points. Or the object of the game is to win the scepter of Zavin. Yeah, but no, it's not. The object of the game is to get the most victory points. There's nothing, there is, no, they don't even include a scepter for you to win. You know, they could, a lot of games will have like some cheesy little end piece. Oh, look what you won. But this doesn't even have, they don't even pretend to have that in it. It's, Whoever has the highest score, okay, you get the scepter. Yay. But it's not, I mean, it, given that the theme is entirely pasted on, um, it still works, I find. Like, it's, it's not like the theme gets in the way. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't detract from the, the playing of the game. Well, it helps a little, the theme works a little bit with the different characters, because each right. player has yeah. a different power. Yeah. So do you like it? What? Do you like? Do you like the game? Do I like the game? Mm. I actually do. As long as I like it, as long as I'm playing with people who don't, can go fast. Right. And don't take too much time in. Oh, yeah, that can be said for almost any game, though. Can't it? Well, this one in particular, because there's so much. There's math. so much. And well, also there's so much downtime. Yeah, it's just uh, playing with those people who analyze too much. Yeah. Other than that, it's a pretty good game. I mean. Even two players, it's not too bad. I'd like to try it two player. I'm curious to see how it works. What did you think of it? I like it. Um, I find it, yeah, it's, uh, I don't feel like I'm playing a, a magic a, a apprentice learning. Uh, you don't feel magical? No, no, not at all. There's other games that I would like to play before it, but I certainly enjoy playing it. Yeah, I'd re I'd I've requested it, it once. Yeah, it's it's not a game that I'm dying to play all the time. Yeah. But if I have a good, I know if I have a good group of mathy people who aren't you know aren't prone to like some people I won't play this. I can think of several people that I will not play this game with. But um, yeah, if you have and if people aren't too concerned about making the ideal move, if you know they're just willing to you know play, then yeah, this is a really good game. I think it'll go nice and quick and.